What's going on guys? Very, very good morning here. Uh, we have the next two days, absolute glamour weather. Um, I have Nico behind the lens as we've got the new Nomad Seacore rod. So I'm gonna explain why I pick up a certain rod and target certain fish with it. So it's um, it's gonna be a big one, huge pressure on Matt again, being all by himself, but I have faith. You know, we've got neap tides, glamour weather, everything's lining up, let's go get it done. pulled up the first area we're going to be fishing and um, first pass through looks great didn't expect there to actually be fish in this area but it looks great so what I usually do is I pull up on the mark have a good sound around and that way as I pull up the boat will start drifting a certain direction and I'm like cool that's the way we're going to drift we'll go back around now which we're doing we'll pull up and always very important hit reverse completely stop your boat do a nice little drift through, so let's see what happens here. Right, first drop of the morning, Seacore P462. Let's see how she goes. I usually don't fish this area on an incoming tide, but we do have neeps at the moment, so run you through like wine pulling up to places, wine fishing them. That way, you know, if you guys have similar scenarios, you. Oh my god, no way. That's big. It actually did work. So, I don't think that's a nanny, I think that might be a trout. Basically, what it, what's going on today is we have the smallest neeps, one of the smallest of the year. And these marks that I'm fishing, they're right near a reef, and the reef has an actual channel to it. So, what happens is that on an incoming tide, it flows north-south straight through the center of the channel and uh, it stirs up all the water. So this whole area, I'm, at, I'm on the southern side of the reef at the moment. This whole area is actually really good for an outgoing tide. So what happens is you get this like beautiful big influx of fresh water that comes from the south and pushes through instead of that dirty water that pushes through the reef system and stirs it all up on an incoming. So, my theory today was, hey, let's just shoot out there, see what happens, because it's such a small tide on an incoming, it shouldn't stir up the water, and honestly, I haven't seen it this blue in a long time, and that is a very good bar cheek trout. Let's drop. We could be on here. We could be really on. I'll take that. First drop of the morning. Literally pulled up. It's so quiet. It's insane. Uh, great little bar cheek trout, that one. It's not that little. He's a good fish. Great fish. First fish on the sea call. I'll take it too. Felt great. Felt really nice. So, really just going <laughs> to go to work here though because I want to give you guys an honest opinion at the end, and um, it's a good start. Oh, 
Hold on. Oh, are you kidding? Oh my god. What the? Did you get that? What was happening? I was trying to readjust the boat. The jig was sitting on the bottom. Oh my... Slow down, tiger. Ah, wow! Oh my god! What the? Come on, baby, get off the bottom. Get off the bottom. Oh, this is massive. Come on, get up. Come on. I haven't, I've never caught a Chinaman here. So I'm kind of freaking out. Big time, like. I'm really panicking inside. You might not be able to tell, but I'm freaking out. Rod has got some guts to it. Dude, come on, baby. <laughs> Pushing this thing and it's just owning it. What? No way. <sighs> Why? Like, you don't live here. <laughs> You're not supposed to be here. I mean, if there's one way to test a rod, you go and find a Chinaman. To those guys who wonder why, we kind of get a little bit disappointed when we catch Chinamen. So here around the Great Barrier Reef, Chinamen eat a lot of smaller fish and they have cigatera. So in places like WA in Australia, they don't have cigatera and they're a prized fish. Whereas here we can't eat them. And uh, basically they live all around the areas where we get nannies and reds. So you have a fight like that, potential dream fish. And this guy turns up and honestly, you can't be a fish snob to them. Hey, they're an incredible species. They fight hard, they look great. But it's just <laughs> me and the Chinaman. <laughs> Holy hell, that was wild. First burn thumb of the morning. Right, let's get him up. This guy is an absolute tank. He is massive, dude. Oh my God. That's, that could be up there with one of the biggest ones I've ever caught. Of all the Chinas I've ever caught, this is my PB 101. <laughs> That's absolutely enormous. One Sea Ranger pinned in the top of the lip. The thing's giant. Hey, like, inc hold on. Don't, don't, don't do it to me, man. You're too heavy for that. Let's flip his tail. Oh. All good? Yeah. I'm just going to go for the spear and get some oxygen in him. Another really good reason behind why I drift, if you guys look on the left hand side here, these are my normal marks. We've, I've hooked this fish, it's actually pulled the boat across. We've just come over that, there's a school of nannies, the way they're stacked on top of each other and in a ball. So, I know where I'm drifting on the next one. Not that I'm ready for it, but literally just fighting that Chinaman. So he's pulled us across our drift line. Now we're starting to do our normal drift line. We're drifting straight back over the entire school of fish we actually sounded at the start. So, like I've talked about before, I've got a 120 on. 
sending it straight down to them. Hey, just look at it. It's like perfectly vertical, hits the bottom. Come on, give me something good red. Not that thing again, or his mate. All right, so we're on the same mark. I could actually see on the sounder that the fish were coming up following the jig. Just not committing, so I've gone to a 130 squid tracks and I've gone to the 1225 spin. See, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but before you leave an area, just change it up, see what happens. Oh, oh, Nico. Nico. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Just trying to adjust me drift again and it happened. Could be better. This is the right stripe. The stripe we're after. We didn't want that previous stripe. We want this stripe. This is exactly what Matt wanted. Oh, come on, he's still going me to put in the boat. <sighs> Tell you what, pressure's on, and this thing comes in the boat. What a feeling. I ended up same mark there. We saw those fish, mucked around with them for a little while, changed over to a louder jig. If it ain't chartreuse, it's no use, as some would say, but that is just an epic, epic Red Emperor. You know, we've brought the sea core out, we've got the full range, so the idea is, come out here, have a jig. We've got a nice trout. No other better way to test it out on a monster, monster Chinaman, and then to pull one of these things up as quality. Three perfect fish. Now we're gonna head off and uh, just keep putting these rods to work and see how we go. But so far, very, very impressed. As a straight P4 rating, um, I'm going to find myself probably using this in these bigger, bigger fish areas because, you know, in that Chinaman scene, two to four, extremely soft, beautiful rod. This thing being a straight four, it's got hurt and really, really put some hurt in the fish. So it's going to be my big fish rod, that's for sure. But hey, happy days for Matt there. Look at this thing. Oh, stop it, he still wants to fight me. I gotcha. As a bit of a recap on things, fish were a little bit slow because of that incoming tide, like I said, but we got really lucky. That neap uh, basically just didn't flow, like that incoming neap just didn't push all that dirty water in. Water's still beautiful and clean, so for me, testing out the new P4, loved it. Three perfect fish to actually test it on. Nice little trouty, monster, monster Chinaman and that red, so happy days here for the fellas. Now the fun begins. Now we're heading into an absolute scene of fish where we're gonna um, proper go to work. So we're gonna bring out the P5, that's gonna be the flats, and the two lighter ones. So we'll, go, we'll do the full run through.
Now we've jumped on the flats. Absolutely incredible day. I've got the 12 to 25 and the 8 to 17. It's going to be running through these flats, little perfect sand spits and having a bit of fun. And I forgot to say, just in case, I kind of have like a little bit of a fail safe on the roof here. So I've got the PE5 and that's got me Old Faithful 155 floating, extremely versatile lure. Uh, that's going to be for in case we see a GT. So come up to a deeper section, that guy's going to be P5, mainly going to be running the 12 to 25, but we might have a little bit of fun later with the lighter guy. Okay, we're just entering a beautiful little sandy spot in front of us. What I'm going to do, I've jumped up high in the contender, that way I can actually see the fish when they come out. You kind of, you, it's funny, you've actually got to be quite selective of the fish that come out. So if you have stripies and red throat, I'll pull it away from them. But the cool thing is if I do have a trout come out, I can see him and watch him, see what he needs to kind of get the bite. A lot of the times I'll just come in and smoke it, but if it's a good fish, you want to be up high and you want to be casting like a subsurface lure. I've got a little 95 Mad Skate on. It's like the perfect, perfect little bite-sized treat this fella, so very sticky little trebles. It is a little bit small, but, oh, this has to. But I'm just up here to have fun at the moment. 12 to 25, little inshore flats rod. Jeez. I was kind of prepared, but still wasn't prepared. Like, that was quick. Oh, I don't know how that didn't break. But Long Thomas has bit my line and there's just hanging on by thread. It's a beautiful little common trout. It's exactly what we wanted to do. Cast along the sand, watch carefully, watch him come out. You just got the upper hand because if you don't and they get the upper hand, it's no good. You're in big, big trouble, even with a little fella like this. Okay, I've just, this is exactly why, oh my God. Are they G, they have to be GTs. Oh my God, that one's massive, righto. Um, it's gonna be kind of panic stations if I do hook up. Yep, they're on it. Come on, hear it. Here he comes. Oh my God. Come on, man. He's on it. Come on, chase it. This next zone looks very, very good. They're all spanglies. Oh, they're big. Come on, come on. Oh, they, they're Chinese, little Chinese and spanglies. Come on, buddy. Yep, perfect. Oh, this will test the rod. <laughs> Into him, son. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, they have so much power. That's incredible. I've got a lot of herd on this fish too. That's cool. The crazy part is, come on buddy. Oh my God, go. 
come back this way. He's not taking me to the reef. He's being a very good boy. But he's loving the motors. Back off a little bit now. Okay, I'm gonna go to the door to slide him in. Maybe if I tell him, I'm gonna let you go, let us get the shot. Good boy. 12 to 25. That was cool. <laughs> that is an absolute powerhouse, that thing. Not many fish today, because it's just so incredibly calm and still, very little run. Like I said, easy, like, like I said before, smallest tide of the year just about, but at least the ones we're getting, big. Very cool, tested that out for sure. Right in front of me here, you see this massive big thing of sand. And a lot of people, sand's like the most underrated structure on the reef, hey. I don't know what it is about the fish, but you may not get your coral trout and your hectic reef species there, but there's so many fish that live in amongst the sand. So if you do get a chance, like, and you are in this kind of area, don't be scared to fire out a couple because between Spanglies, um, like red bass, Chinamen, a lot of fish call the sand home. I'd love to know what they actually eat in there, but yeah, it's, it's incredible how many fish you, like it looks absolutely like desert. And then fish just comes out of nowhere and eats it. He knows where his home is. Ah, got him. Number two, XL Spangle. That's it for the 12 to 25. If there's a way to test it out, you go to the flats, you cast a mad scad, get a spangle. These things pull so, so incredibly hard. So that's it for us. We've got a big blue hole that's maybe a kilometer away. We're gonna idle in there. I'm gonna send the drone up first, hopefully show you guys some really cool footage of a big GT that we're gonna hook and land. I'm just manifesting it, it's happening right now. See ya buddy, you did me proud.
Naše, naše holo, kak ma gliži, bang, bang He's staying high. <sighs> Great fish. Beautiful run. <sighs> yeah, good fish. Okay, after this one, I'm having a beer, Nico's having a cast. <clears throat> Look at his mate. <sighs> OK, 
Okay, beautiful. That's a big rig, hey? That is a big rig. There's a fusy school right there too. <laughs> you can hear it. It's going, Nick, cast at me. <laughs> So in amongst all this chaos, we've picked up the 30 to 50 pound. Now this to me is the ultimate flats rod, but while we're in this mayhem, we're gonna give it a bit of a test. It's gonna walk the dog through these fusies and see if there's any monsters that lurk. Oh. Oh. That's a good one. I think he's gonna boogie. It's got to get that little hook in there. That, that's a good fish. Okay, I might need to um. <laughs> In amongst the chaos, of course, and teased him and teased him. <laughs> so, I think this is like, you know, doing this stuff is pretty wild, but it gives you a very good understanding of what the capabilities are of a rod. You know, it's, and don't panic. I kind of have an idea of my surroundings. I have a great fish on. I know I've got a bommy behind me, one to the left. I've got current line in front of me, so it means there's one that way somewhere in the sunlight. But, I'm just gonna take our time. If I had someone driving, I'd ask them to just drive on top of the fish and get a good line angle. But, for now, the Rodney is doing a great job happy with that. Has a 30 to 50 pound rod. That is absolutely perfect. He's got a very nice home. That's for sure. It should hold. <laughs> Shows the capabilities of a rod, truly, when you can do that. Walk the little 155. If you can see that 155, it's beaten. So, <clears throat> really good banger. Oh God, the conditions on it. Life is good, fishing's good. GTs are big. We're kicking goals. We truly are kicking goals. Well, after yesterday and having such a perfect day, waking up to this this morning, like, it's pretty special, hey. Um, bit of a game plan this morning, so we woke up super early because we have a 25 knot incoming southerly and it's about to pump. Like, it, 
looks beautiful now it's very very deceiving we have a change of tide around midday and something you guys should kind of keep in mind right around that change of tide is when that wind will generally hit so i think we're sitting at about 6 30 7 o'clock now so we've got maybe three hours of fishing and then we're going to burst home before this suddenly hits which i reckon should be at about 12 o'clock um, once again ultra ultra neap tide so the decision was get off the reef there's not enough run on there get out a little bit wider drop down to 130 which i'm about to do because i reckon we're coming onto the fish about now and um, just see if we can jig our way home and i can give you guys a better in depth on kind of how i jig and little marks that i jig so it's definitely uh stick around because i'll I'll drop some good hip hints and tips in there. But yeah, look at it. I mean, pretty special, hey? We've got a big pot of dolphins over here on the right doing their thing. Hopefully a school of nannies. We didn't tick off a nanny yesterday, so that's all I want. I want one nanny today, and then we've done all the species. That was a good bite. That was a great bite. This could be a big trout, this one, if it is. The way he attacked it. Nothing better, hey, than you kind of like, oh, I wonder if they're going to eat. wonder if they're going to eat. And then you lift and just goes whack. Hey, jellyfish. Oh, he's done it. He has absolutely done it. That's a beautiful, beautiful trout. Colors on him lit up guys that is a perfect perfect way to get things going big bar cheek trout changed it up a little bit just changed the size of the squid tracks went to a 150 and the color bit more subtle bit more natural still fishing around a similar area we moved a little bit to get away from those trevally um, and it's hard like you know you can't leave fish to find fish but when you have target species, you kind of need to. You just need to bite the bullet sometimes and instantly it's paid off, which is an epic feeling, hey? So, look at the colors on him. The day, the colors. Things are good, things are lining up. We don't have long, so we're gonna have to go to work here to try and get a few more fish, but even if it's just that fish for today, I'll be happy. All right. All right, so as a safety call, this is gonna be my last drop. There is a few marks which are actually inshore right near the islands and in these neap tides it'd be nice because there's a lot of run around the islands so that run might actually get those fish chewing um, but what we're going to do is head back in that way when we do get in tight if that suddenly does pick up at least we're kind of 50 60 k's a bit closer to home uh, but the fishing is definitely not over there's some great fish to be had inshore I just don't know what the boat traffic's going to be like. It's a very good day. I actually feel sorry for the, the guys who don't, they look at just your average weather apps and don't understand when a good southerly comes through because, you know, guys are going to push out a bit wider than they usually would on a morning like this, not realising what's coming. So just be very careful. Like when you're looking at the weather, make sure you find, I use bomb wind graphs and I zoom in and I watch it very carefully and then I kind of overlay it with the live wind so I can have an understanding of what's going on um, I mean as my job I, it's my job to kind of know that stuff because if I do get stuck out of the shelf it's very dangerous but we're just going to make smart calls because you play with the odds they will eventually catch up with you Give him something to chase. The 
cool thing about running it as well, like the fleeing squid, you bring it right up into the water column. So if there is a fish 10 meters away, he's gonna see it come up and come over to it. So you'll just see me throughout these drops. Like I just changed my technique, trying to find what they want or just trying to bring new fish in. And that was a fleeing squid, which then this guy obviously saw it. That's a trevally, but still could have been anything. I mean, if you're getting into jigging, these are incredible fun. Like it's a gold spot trevally. And they pull really hard, but you know, when they're hanging around nanny schools, and we want nannies, we're gonna get moving. So, look buddy, you were good to me, but unfortunately, you were just the wrong species, so let's move. Southeast that came burning up our asses, and uh, it was one of those things where I was like, Nico, how's the actual timing of it? So we ended up pulling into the islands, and unfortunately, the nannies were there, but wind came in hot behind us, and we literally tried to outrun it. But all in all, like, yeah, I know it was a good call. Like, all in all, we had an incredible two days fishing, weather was immaculate. Um, Honestly, to get a call up from Damon to go and test out the rods. I mean, for you guys, you would have seen me fish for nannies and fish for reds and do the GTs and the flats. And I know you've seen it a few times, but the whole idea behind me doing this is when I do something, I, I want to understand the fish. I want to be good at the fish because when I do get an opportunity like this, it's huge, you know? Like, this is my job. This is literally, I'm here with my family at the moment. This is how I bring in the income, this is how I support my family and as a husband and a father and it's a, it's huge, huge pressure, hey, like it seems like an average clip to you guys but to me the understanding of having someone fly up, two days fishing, that's all you get, you don't have like a window of are you going to make it or you're not, you have to get it done, so all my previous videos of me catching fish, you can adult. All my previous videos of me catching fish, learning about GTs and reds and flats and all the rest of it, this is what it all comes down to for me because this is my full-time job. And uh, it's a funny one, like Jess actually calls me, or I call her usually when I'm about half an hour out from the boat ramp. And she'll always say to me like, how was your day, honey? Or how was your two days? And if I say good, she knows it's this thing that we've got going on where uh, it's like this epic feeling that I've provided for the family. It's not like I've gone to work and I've, I'm have i like tired and wrecked. I am tired and wrecked, but I have this feeling where I've like provided for the family and it's this, this epic feeling. Like I can't describe it. And so I, she usually knows it. And so we've literally got the margies going. We've got the fish tacos out here. We've got the family with me, we've, we've, you know. It's a very, very amazing scene. I'm extremely fortunate to be able to do it. Um, and I'm very, very, very... What you missing? You're lying. I'm so... I have this, like, awesome feeling that we've done it. We've accomplished the goal. We had two days to catch fish, and I nailed it. How about you come up here with Dad? It's yummy. Come on. Yeah, that's what you want. Yeah, you with Dad. Absolutely epic two days. Uh, we've actually got a few beers lined up this afternoon as well, hence the Margies as a start. Uh, we're going to go catch up with Brooksy and the boys, have a couple of beers. It is Friday afternoon in Early Beach, you know. This, this calls for one thing. So, 
we're going to do this, we're going to finish off Taco's clean up here. But yeah, all in all, hope you guys enjoyed the clip and uh, a little insight to what I do and my little family. Okay?